So welcome folks to our Yom Kippur morning service. Um, if you have any technical problems, um, you can use the chat box, which is probably at the bottom of your screen. You can just click there and let the hosts know. Christine and Eric are our tech hosts this morning. And as you'll see up there, we have a couple households welcoming you, along with Joel and me. And we're so glad to have everybody here this morning. So we are going to start off with a little bit of instrumental music. Please feel free to lie, lie, lie along with Joel. we're ready for the next slide. We're going to join together in Hine Matov. And this is Joel, who we just heard, and Scott Williams and Sarah Williams and Cheryl Cleary, all leading us together so we can feel a bit of that sense of really singing with others. So let's join in together. Really <laughs> Hine mato madami, shebeta pim gamiyat. Hine mato madami, shebeta pim gamiyat. Hine mato shebeta pim gamiyat. Thank you. 
lovely to be able to hear all those voices together. Thank you to each of the four of you who recorded separately in your own homes and then Joel put it all together and um, we get to sing together. Yeah. And Katrina as well. And Katrina, one of our tech hosts. Yes. So we're going to share a few greetings now for Yom Kippur. I'm going to offer a few in English and Hebrew and Yiddish, and then we'll see if there's anybody else who wants to offer a greeting in any other language. So um, for an all-purpose Yiddish greeting, we have good yontif, which means a good holiday for you. We have gamar tov in Hebrew, which means may you be sealed. May the holiday com be completed for you for good, the holiday that began at Rosh Hashanah. So gamar tov. And then we have som kal Hebrew, which means may you have an easy fast. And then of course we can always say shana tova because we've got these 10 days of welcoming the new year, even the new year, even though the new year has begun, we are still in the process of entering it together. So I want to see if anybody else has a way that you would like to share a new year greeting. If there's another language, you know, last night we had uh, French and Spanish and American Sign Language and Romanian and Chinese, I think may not be remembering everything, but um, it's just so lovely to hear or watch greetings in other languages. So if anybody would like to offer anything, please wave your hand around and we will do our best to find you. Uh, and if I don't find you, you can just unmute yourself and speak up. So anybody here who'd like to offer a greeting in another language that you know. Just looking here. You have any hands waving around? Not yet. Wow. Amazing. I may have to just ask somebody who I know knows another language here. Let me just think, who do I know? I know Catherine speaks French, but we already had her a couple times. Let me see if there's anybody else here who knows another language, who's going to volunteer. Do we have anybody? Ah, okay, Jack Lerner, please unmute yourself and go for it. Feliz Año Nuevo. Feliz Año Nuevo. In Espanol. Nuevo. Thank you. Año Nuevo. Gracias. So that was Spanish. Wonderful. Anybody else here? Okay, then I am going to call on Catherine, who I know speaks a few different languages. And Catherine, you can just uh, take your pick. Tell us what you'd like to offer us greetings in. You there, Catherine? Yeah, yeah, no, I, yeah. How about if I say it in Polish? Oh, that would be wonderful. And please say it slowly a couple times. Uh, and I have to kind of remember, Dobrego Nowego Roku, which means Happy New Year. Wow. Can you say it again slowly? <laughs> Dobrego Nowego Roku. Thank you. Rachel Scholl and Jessica have their hands up. All right, Rachel. That's in Chinese. Wow, thank you so much. Um, I can say good fast in ASL. So Great. that would be um, good and then eat none. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, th I think I need to learn this good. Does it matter which hand? Can we all try on this top? one? Can you do it again? Go for it, Jess. Yeah, so it's good, which you can do it either hand. I'm left handed, so I do it weird. Uh, eat and then none. None. <laughs> Good. Thank you. 
I like that. So thanks to everybody who was just brave enough to share one of your ways of saying Happy New Year or Good Fast or whatever other greeting you shared. And now we are going to each go to a small group, um, chance to either meet somebody new or see somebody you already have met, already know, and just a chance, four minutes, to greet one another, say Happy New Year or Gamar Tov or whatever it is you would like to say to the others there with you. And just say anything you'd like to about what brought you here this morning um, or anything else you feel like sharing about your experience of the New Year, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur so far. So you are going to be moved into a room for four minutes um, you have not been lost in, in the ether. You'll be in your room and then we'll all come back together. So I'll see you again in four minutes. Hey folks, if you were not automatically moved to your breakout room, click breakout rooms at the bottom of your screen or maybe a button that says more with three dots and you'll see an option to join a breakout room. Holly and I don't think you're Alfred, but um, potentially Mrs. Whitman, if you look at the bottom of your screen, you will see a button that says breakout rooms or uh, potentially it will say more with three little dots. If you click on that, you should see an option that says join breakout room. And then you can say hello to some other folks. Holly, same goes for you.
you know, we're back in the big room. Those of us who are, uh, there I go. Um, I was, we were just talking at the very end about an easy fast and some folks in my room said, you know, the fast is easy right now. It's still morning. Um, but we'll, we'll talk around three o'clock and see if it's still easy. My cure for an easy fast, which I learned in about 2001, uh, when I was doing some services for Hillel at Stanford, uh, and for the first time, I was busy the whole day. I was either leading a service, leading a workshop, preparing Torah reading, doing something. And that's what made it an easy fast for me. If I kept busy, I had no time to think about being hungry. So that's my personal cure, you know, just in, our, in, in downtime, you can open up a prayer book or open up a, an inspirational book that, of whatever suits you or something that keeps your mind on the themes of the day and instead of on the grumbling stomach. Thank you, Joel. Well, going to join together now in a song called Matovu, It's the Morning. And it's a song that is about stepping into our holy space and as you know this year zoom is our holy space and um i'm so glad we're here in it together so tech folks you can go ahead and put up that slide and let's sing together matovu it's the morning matovu bless us this morning Oh, Halecha, let us enter Yaakov, our heritage Nishkenotecha, we are searching Will you show us Yisrael? We are Yisrael Born to sing your praises In your holy, holy spaces Matovu, bless the morning Matovu, Matovu Bless us this morning, O oh, Halecha, let us enter, Yaakov, our heritage. Ishkenotecha, we are searching, will you show us, Yisrael, we are Yisrael. Born to sing your praises in your holy, holy spaces, Matovu, bless the morning, Matovu. Sing your praises in your holy, holy spaces. Matovu, bless the morning. Matovu. And now we'll move into the themes of the holiday, returning again to who we are, returning and being renewed. And you probably all are familiar at this point with the concept of tshuva, of turning, returning, responding. And that's what we're focusing on again today on the last day of this holiday as we share Yom Kippur together. So let's sing together, return again, help us to be renewed. Ah, she 
Joel is going to read for us called Azazel and or the mystery of Azazel. Thousands of years ago Yom Kippur was marked at the temple in Jerusalem and one of the ways that it was marked was by taking a goat that lots were drawn to determine which goat it would be and then the goat was sent off into the wilderness as a symbolic way of sending away the wrongdoings for all of the Jewish people. So that's where the word scapegoat comes from. And we're going to hear the writing of Rabbi Goodman as he interprets this for us in a, a modern way. In this name Azazel, is one of those words in the Torah, nobody knows what it means. It could be an ancient Canaanite demon, uh, it could be a place name, we just, we simply don't know. So that too is part of the mystery. <clears throat> but the goat on which the lot fell for Azazel shall be set alive before God to make atonement into the wilderness. I am writing this sitting on a hill in a wilderness somewhere in the United States of America. I am here for purification, I think, maybe rededication. I haven't spoken for days. I have brought an instrument to make music with, a notebook to write in, a book. There are many animals here. It's a wild place. I am a guest in the wilderness. That is clear to me. I asked the goats, the horses, the brush rangers, the bottom dwellers to allow me to squat on their ground, to pray here, to play my instrument. 
It was pretty, but it was not why I came. On the fourth day, this day, I began to ask for forgiveness. I sank deeper into silence, and an animal with somewhat elaborate horns wandered by and nibbled from a loaf of bread I carried with me. I spread a piece of the bread with peanut butter, and the animal signaled to me in some abstract, trans-species way its approval. Then the animal spoke. It's about forgiveness, isn't it? The animal said. Yes, I said, it's about forgiveness. Give me your burdens, the animal said. I am a load-bearing animal. I am a yoked animal. Give up your burdens, and I will carry them into the wilderness. So I took my burdens, my self-consciousness, my separation, my isolation, my flight, fear, especially my fear, everything that separates me from God and all that I love the most, and I laid them on the shoulders of this animal, on the back of this beautiful yoked beast. I gave up my fear, and I watched as the animal disappeared into the hills. I lifted up my hands, looked up and said to the trees, to the sky, to the stones, to the dirt, to the dirt especially, to the mud. Is this the way it works? From the distance I heard, yes, this is precisely the way it works. We'll join together now in singing Baruch Hu. First, we have a Kavanah, an intention, and then Joel and I will call out to you to bless the infinite and you will respond, blessing the infinite. This is our call to prayer, uh, call and response. And I'll mention something that we mentioned last night. I don't think we've said that yet this morning. If we have, I apologize for saying it twice. Customarily, this prayer is said in a standing position. Um, I want to give a shout out to Leslie Gordon of Blessed Memory, who was a member of Congregation Netivot Shalom, whose name I just remembered last night after trying for a long time. She was um, the one who came to our rabbi some years ago. She uh, lived with cerebral palsy her entire life, lived in a wheelchair. And she was the one who suggested the phrase that we use in many congregations are now adopted to rise in body or spirit. Um, you can remain in whatever physical position works best for you, but we rise, we bring ourselves to greater attention, greater focus, greater kavanah as we chant these words. Barechu, dear one, Shekhinah, holy name. When I call on the light of my soul, I come home. Barechu, dear one, Shekhinah. Holy name, when I call on the light of my soul, I come home. Baruch Hu, dear one, Shekhinah, holy name, when I call on the light of my soul, I come home. When I call on the light of my soul, I come home. Light, 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 light.
Barechu et Adonai HaMevorach And together Baruch Adonai HaMevorach Le'olam Ba'ed We'll join together now and open up our eyes which leads us into the Shema. And opening up our eyes is a reminder to look for the oneness that is here in the world, even when we cannot see it. And the Shema is a reminder to listen for that oneness, for the ways all of us are deeply connected. And then it's our task to bring that oneness more into the world so that it's more visible, it's more able to be experienced. Let's join together. Since the Shema is a reminder to listen, many cover their eyes when they say it. We will take one word for each breath or one breath for each word. And then in something which in many communities is unique to Yom Kippur, in other communities, it's not. It's done all year long. But in Orthodox and conservative and more traditional communities, the line Baruch Shem Kivod is usually pronounced in a whisper or an undertone. On Yom Kippur, all communities say that word, say that phrase strongly and loudly. So we'll join with our fellow communities of Jews, God wrestlers around the world, saying these words. Open up our eyes, teach us how to live, fill our hearts with joy and all the love you have to give. Gather us in peace as you lead us to your name, and we will know that you are one. Open up our eyes, teach us how to live, fill our hearts with joy and all the love you have to give. Gather us in peace as you lead us to your name. We will know that you are one. Open up our eyes, teach us how to live. Fill our hearts with joy and all the love you have to give. Gather us in peace as you leave us to your name and we will know that you are one and we will know that you are one and then our next slide covering our eyes if we like Shema Yisrael
אותו לעולם ועד. We can move now to our next slide. We have our silent prayer, our Amidah. Amidah means standing, but as Joel said earlier, we can stand or sit, do whatever works. So we're each connecting with this here in our own homes. And we'll take about four minutes here for this silent prayer. You may focus on the prayer on the screen. You may focus on your own prayers. I suggested that people have something to write with if you'd like to do a little bit of writing about what it is you are working on in this new year, a step you want to take, a person you wanna connect with, a kind of support you would like to get in order to change. So please use this time as is best for you. And we will come back together in about four minutes. And if it's helpful for you to turn off your screen, feel free to do that. And then we'll come back together to sing Ose Shalom.
right, folks, we can move now to our Ose Shalom slide. Thank you. From our friends in Jerusalem at Nabatehila Prayer Community. Oh, Shalom Abim Roma. Who ya ase shalom aleinu ve al koho Yisrael ve al kol yoshvei tevel ve himru take the slide down tech folks I'm going to say a few words before we move into our next prayer so we're about to sing and speak and listen to the Unatana Tokef which is a prayer that can be easily understood in a way that I think is um more disturbing than it needs to be. In other words, it is a disturbing prayer because it's a prayer that talks about what will happen in the next year and how we don't know what will happen. But it can be understood as a prayer that's saying, this is all predetermined for God, I mean, by God for us, or that there's some way in which we are going to be potentially punished if we don't do the right thing. And what the prayer is saying is we don't know what is going to happen in the next year. There are many, many possibilities, but the way that we choose to live will make a difference. Whatever it is that happens that is beyond our control, there are some parts of our lives that are in our control. So I want to make sure people understand this that way, rather than the idea that it is all preordained. Um, and I'm going to read to you a, a brief 
teaching about this prayer that I found meaningful. At first glance, the idea of life as a book that God has written goes against our experience. We sense that we direct our own steps, that the outcomes are related to decisions we make, decisions other people make, and that both the good and the bad in our lives are also influenced by chance. There's another part of our experience though that finds perfect expression in the book of life metaphor. We know that in reality, there is only one life story that is ours. Though it has yet to unfold and whether or not we believe any of it is preordained, the story of what will have happened is real. What will my life be like one year from now? When I turn the next page, there may be a tragedy, there may be a wonderful surprise. So the question is, how should I live right now given this uncertainty. And those words are written by Rabbi Helen Plotkin. And I'm gonna conclude with a couple more sentences from her. On Yom Kippur, we give ourselves over to this truth. It is not what happens to you that makes your life meaningful. The power is in your hands to cultivate the self to whom it happens. Joel is now going to chant for us the very beginning of the Unatana Tokef prayer. So tech folks, you can go ahead and put up slide 11. And we are going to listen to these words sung in Hebrew, they have a rather majestic sound to them, as you'll experience. Untane tokef kedushat yom ki. Ayom Uvo Tina Se Malhute Ha Vegicon Behesed Kis Ha Teshev Alab Teshev Alab now I will read to you some of the words of the Unatana Tokef so we can go to the next slide. So much can happen in a year. In a year's time, our world can be irrevocably shattered or it can be reborn anew. And now we stand together, feeling still the resonance of a year now past, a book now sealed. Now we stand together, looking out with fear and hope into a year stretching out limitlessly before us, a book yet to be written. Will it be a year? Just one moment here, my view got a little messed up. Okay. Will it be a year of curse or a year of blessing, of wounding or of healing? Though we cannot know the answer, 
it is all we can do to send out our prayers, our fears, our hopes, our yearning. May the dreams we dare to dream be written into the book of our lives and may it be an ongoing tale of blessing, wholeness, and peace. And now we'll sing together the words at the bottom of the page, the Rosh Hashanah Yikatevun Uviyom Tzum Kippur Yechatemun. The Rosh Hashanah Yikatevun Uviyom Tzum Kippur Uviyom Tzum Kippur Yechatemun The Rosh Hashanah Yikatevun Uviyom Tzum Kippur Uviyom Tzum Kippur Yechatemun We move on now to the next page, and I will continue to read for, to read to you. And again, I just need to fix my screen, which is acting up a bit. How many shall pass away and how many shall be born? Who shall live? and who shall die, who in the fullness of years, and who before their time, who by fire, and who by water, who by the sword, and who by beast, who by young hunger, and who by thirst, who by earthquake, and who by plague who by strangling and who by stoning, who shall be at rest and who shall be restless, who shall be calm and who shall be distraught, who shall be serene and who shall be tormented, who shall be poor and who shall be rich, who shall be brought low and who uplifted? And we sing together again. Berosh Hashana Yikatevun Uvi Yom Tzom Kippur Uvi Yom Tzom Kippur Yechatemun Berosh Hashana Yikatevun Uvi Yom Tzom Kippur Uvi Yom Tzom Kippur Yechatemun So many of these words hit home a little harder this year, at least to me. Who by fire, who by plague, who by strangling. It seems random on some level, and sometimes it is. We also know that there are those more likely than, than others to suffer to be hit by plague, whether you are elder or a frontline worker or poor or a person of color, who by strangling, whether by COVID or by the neck of a police officer, by the knee of a police officer on your neck, who by fire, as we sit here looking all around us, some of us breathing the smoke from St. Helena, may the folks in St. Helena be safe and taken care of. We'll move now to the next slide. And this is the core message of this prayer here. And it's relevant to what Joel just said, because a lot of things we do have some control over, although not everything. Utshuva, utfila, utsdaka, 
ma avirin et roa hagizera, but chuva and fila and sadaka, turning, prayer, righteous acts and generosity, lessen the harshness of the decree. We come now to the Ashamnu prayer, which is a communal list of wrongdoings. None of us have done everything on this list, but it's a way to remind us, it's a way to share in the confession. It's a way to not have to embarrass anybody by having to say one at a time, I did this, I did that. And Robin Blum is going to introduce the beginning of this prayer and then read it to us and then we will chant together. So Robin, please go ahead. Hi, thanks Rabbi Bridget. I've been reciting the Shamnu every Yom Kippur since I began going to adult services as a preteen. I've always respected the Jewish perspective that we have another opportunity in the coming year to try to be a better person, to reach the mark that we didn't reach this year. One thing I hadn't realized until now is that this confession and asking for forgiveness is meant to be said together as a community because of our shared responsibility and the transgressions that we've committed. I'm so grateful to you, Rabbi Bridget and Jewish Gateways for helping us fulfill our responsibility this year together in a way that still has much in common with what I've done for all those other years. Um, so the Ashamnu, the alphabet of wrongdoing. It may not be an easy task to confront our feelings and actions. Still more daunting to name them. Perhaps most difficult to speak them. Now we will speak of and chant them together. Let us be bold enough to see, humble enough to feel, and daring enough to turn. Do you, um, Rabbi Bridget, do you want me to say the Hebrew now? No, I think, doing I, think, I think you've done everything you need to, Robin, and thank you so much. And Joel is now going to lead us in the chanting so we can all join in together with him. Ashamnu bagadnu gazalnu dibarnu dohofi ay 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 Zadnu, Hamasnu, Tafalnu, Sheker, Yasnu, Ra, Kizavnu, Latsnu, Maradnu, Niatsnu, Sarahanu, Avinu, Pashanu, Sararnu, Kishinu, Oref. Ay 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 Rashanu shihadnu tiavnu tainu titanu Yai ay 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 Ay, 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 ay. And now we will read those wrongdoings in Hebrew and English. 
so we can really take in what they are. And I'm going to read the Hebrew, and then I ask you to respond with the English. Ashamnu. We have sinned against others. Bagadnu. We have betrayed people who trusted us. Gazalnu. We have stolen people's money, time, or friendship. Dibarnu dofi. We have used words to mislead, create barriers, and as weapons. Heavinu. Our actions have led others to evil. Vihir shanu. We have encouraged others to do evil. Zadnu. We have refused to admit we were wrong. Hamasnu. We have manipulated others. Tafalnu Sheker. We preferred to believe lies rather than accept the truth. Yaatsnu Ra. We have been bad examples to others. Kizavnu. We have lied. Latsnu. We have made light of the pain of others. Maradnu. We have created unnecessary strife. Ni atsnu. We have dishonored God in the way we live our lives. Sararnu. We have lived as though there were no spiritual element in our lives. Avinu. We have done what we know to be wrong to get what we want. Pashanu. We have ignored the pain of others. Sararnu. We have oppressed. Kishinu Oref. We have persistently done deeds that hurt ourselves and others. Rashanu. We have been violent. Shihatnu. We have let our impulses rule our lives. Tiavnu. We have degraded ourselves. Tainu. We have gone astray. Titanu. We have led others astray. And now, as I have communicated to you through email and sharing that at services, we have created a way for people to share their regrets from the past year. And I would like to read some of those to help bring home that this is real. Everything on the list we just read was a confession from a real person. And here are some of the things that people in this community are working on, trying to put behind them, trying to change. So here are some anonymous regrets from this community from the past year. Responding without thinking. I regret that I pushed myself to stay at a job for which I was not suited, with disastrous results for me, emotionally. Being angry, judgmental, and unloving. Inability to control rage and anger when physically ill. Too much interior judgment critical of myself and others. Limited patience with kids, not living in the moment. I regret not being transparent with the people I love in order to avoid hurting them. Did not meet my promise and commitment to God, myself and BFC to be of service for others, of, to be of service to others. I regret waiting for my turn to talk rather than truly listening and trying to understand. I regret the amount of time I have wasted in anger. And now we will return to the words of our prayer book with our Al-Chet prayer. 
al chet, we missed the mark, a list of some of the things that we may have done that we may wish to change from this past year. And I will read here and invite you to read along with me at the top of the page. Have we made time for ourselves? Have we abused our health? Have we let our fears turn into anger instead of facing our fears? Have we thought we were too weak to stand up to bullies? Have we failed to listen to voices telling us unpleasant truths? And now we sing together. life anew. this life anew. For the next slide, let's read again together. Have we made time for those who need us? Have we talked of others' failings behind their backs instead of face to face? Have we prevented others from showing their strengths? Are we clinging to grudges? For all of these, we ask one thing of you. Forgive us, return us, grant us life anew. Salah. 
We'll join together now in Avinu Malkenu. Our confessions are mixed in with a lot of offers of compassion and requests for compassion. And that is what Avinu Malkenu gives us a chance to express. So let's move to our next slide and let's join together. We'll be singing the Hebrew of the Avinu Malkinu. So tech people, we are ready for slide. There we go. Perfect. Yes. Avinu Malkinu Choneinu Vaaneinu Avinu malkeinu, choneinu vaaneinu, ki en banu maasim. Ase imanu, sedaka vachesed. Ase imanu, sedaka vachesed, vehoshi eheinu. Now, Catherine Warren is going to introduce and lead us in an Avinu Malkenu for this time, a prayer written specifically for this year. So Catherine, please go ahead and share your thoughts and then lead us in this prayer. On these days, we are supposed to ask for forgiveness for mistakes we made and do work of repair with others. But even more is asked of us to become better people, to be the best we can be. We are offered the opportunity for spiritual and moral growth. This version of the prayer really speaks to me. It inspires reflection, taking stock of our values and charting a course of action, not only to repair our bonds, but also to fight against all types of injustice. It also asks us not to just rely on spiritual guidance, but to be active, to step up and draw strength and courage from our inner selves. Avinu Malkenu for this time. Avinu Malkenu, open our hearts so we will see all the things we have been unwilling to see and grow in humility and compassion. Avinu Malkenu, remove cynicism from our hearts that we may experience and move through despair and helplessness to be the ones you are calling us to be. Avinu Malkenu, inspire us to contribute to ending structural and personal races. Avinu Malkenu, inspire us to contribute to ending structural and personal sexes. Avinu Malkenu, inspire us to contribute to ending structural and personal heterosexes. Avinu Malkenu, inspire us to contribute to ending structural and personal antisemitism. Avinu Malkenu, inspire us to compassion to those with whom we disagree. May we see the humanity even if they fail to see ours. Avinu Malkenu, move us to own our humanity so we may live what you've taught us. I have a hard time seeing on this side to see us all your creations. Avinu Malkenu, let us not rest comfortably with the words of this prayers waiting. I'm, I have a hard time seeing it. <laughs> uh, for this word of prayers waiting for you to take, to act on us. We must act on ourselves. Thank you, Catherine. And we'll sing together now, Avinu Malkenu, this time, in English. Is 
Sorry, I was muted. O oh, mother and father of life, please hear us and give us your grace. O oh, guide deep within us, O oh, hear us and give us compassion and mercy and peace. O oh, guide us through your grace, justice and mercy to all. O oh, guide us and teach us grand justice and mercy, we shall be free once again. And now I'm going to ask you to read with me as we share some of the words of Avinu Malkinu, asking to be the people we mean to be. So let's read together. Our Father, our King, teach us how we can be better citizens. Our Mother, our Queen, help us atone for our wrongdoings. Our source and our destiny, let us return to you wholly and completely. Our Guide and our Truth, teach us how to help those who are ill. Our Father, our King, teach us how to work for freedom for all. Our Mother, our Queen, help us to find our place in your universe. Our source and our destiny, help us to learn how to be more loving. Our guide and our truth, help us create a year of abundance and blessing. And we sing once more this time in Hebrew. Asehimanu, Sedaka Bachesed. Asehimanu, Sedaka Bachesed, Lehoshienu, Avinu Malkeenu, Honenu Vanenu. Avinu malkeinu, konenu vanenu, ki en banu masim. Ase imanu, sedaka vachesed. Ase imanu, sedaka vachesed, vehoshienu. And we can go ahead and have the slides down. I want to speak to everyone for a moment. Um, you may at this point or earlier or later have in our service, have a feeling of, gosh, we keep singing and saying these things over and over and over. Why are we doing this so repetitively? And um, I want to share one of the reasons Yom Kippur is meant to wear us down. Uh, it's not like most of our activities where we're, uh, we don't want to be bored. We don't want to do the same thing over and over and over unless we choose to. But Yom Kippur is trying to encourage us to be vulnerable, to feel tired enough, whether it's internally or externally, to be more open to experiencing the regret for things we want to change, to be more open to being honest with ourselves. So that's why this experience is different from most of the experiences we have. Um, so if there's, if it feels like, gee, this is going on and on and over and over, there's a reason. And now we're going to sing together, Adonai, Adonai. As I've said, our confession, and yes, Judaism has confession. It's not only a thing for other religions, and the word for it in Hebrew is vidui. Um, so mixed in with our confession, 
we have so much compassion and requests for forgiveness. So let's sing together here in Hebrew and then in English these words from our Torah in which God calls out, this is who I am. I'm here for you. And speaking of repeating, it's customary to say this three times. We mix it up a little bit by saying it first in English, then using Rabbi Bert Jacobson's English translation, and then going back to the, I mean, saying first in Hebrew, then to the English translation, then back to Hebrew. And as Rabbi Bridget said, these are God's self-description, uh, the words of God to a very shell-shocked Moses who's been gone through a traumatic experience uh, with the Jewish people. He's been up on the mountain receiving instructions from God. They've been down in the desert making a golden calf. And uh, there's a whole aftermath to that. And when God said, when Moses when he says, can I see you? And God says, well, no. But here's a compromise. You can see the back of me and you can hear these words of, of self-compassion, which Moses then later quotes to God repeatedly. Whenever God gets m angry, I was thinking of different words, with the, with the Israelites, and that happens a lot, especially in the book of Numbers. Moses repeatedly quotes these very words to God saying, didn't you tell me this is who you are? Adonai, Adonai, El Rahum Vehanun, Erech Apayim, Verachesed Vemet, Noser Hesed La Lahafim, Nose Avon Vafesha. The Hataha, the Nake Adonai, Adonai, compassion and tenderness, patience, forbearance, kindness, awareness, bearing love from age to age, lifting guilt and mistakes and making us free. Adonai, Adonai, El Rahum Vehanun, Erech Apayim, Verav Chesed Vemet, Notzer Chesed Lalafim, Notze Avon Vafesha, it's as if with our lives hanging in the balance, which is the traditional theology of Yom Kippur, we step into Moses' own shoes uh, or sandals, if you will, um, and reenact these times in numbers as if to say, God, we may have screwed up. Remember, please, please remember who you really are. We'll come now to our Torah service, and I'm going to take out the Torah, and we are going to have a chance to join together in the blessings before the Torah reading, and then I'm going to read, um, and we will offer the blessing after the reading, and um, then we'll have a chance to have some discussion about the Torah portion. Um, and I'm really looking forward to hearing people's comments. And I'm also going to share a few of my own. Um, so tech folks, you can take this slide here down. And um, we pre-recorded the Torah reading because it's a little too complicated for me to take out the Torah and <laughs> stand up and read from it and so on while I'm sitting here in front of Zoom. And when I looked at the, the reading, I noticed something, which is that my hands are shaking. So I wanted to reassure folks, I have an inherited tremor. I am not, um, there's nothing dangerous happening here. And sometimes it shows up and sometimes it doesn't. So when you see my hands shaking, please don't worry about me. Um, and with that, 
let's go ahead and enter into our Torah service. Time to take our Torah out of our ark, which this year is a Talit. I'm going to lift it up so you can say hello to it. Here's our Torah. And now I'm going to put it down and take the cover off and find where we're reading so I can be sure we're in the right place before I get started. Okay, I see that we are in the right place, so I'm going to touch the Torah and then give a kiss, so I'm connecting all of us to the Torah before we join in in our blessing. And tech folks, we need our blessing uh for before the torah reading now which is slide 26. one second so please join in with me if you would like baruchu et adonai hamivorach baruch adonai hamivorach le'olam ba'ed Baruch Adonai HaMavarach Le'olam Va'ed Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bachar Banu Mikol HaAmim V'natan Lanu Et Torato Baruch Atah Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen Before I read, I want to tell you a little bit about what's in this Torah portion. The setting is that Moses is sharing his last words with the Israelites. They've gone through this 40 years in the desert with him, and he's done his best to lead them, and now he knows he's about to die. Oh, okay. and they're going to cross the Jordan River and go into the land of Israel. So he's trying to give all of his summary of what's happened to him and them and his advice, kind of like deathbed uh, exhortations and requests. So he's going to summarize what happened and tell them what he thinks is most important. And I want to ask you to watch for three things. One is, at the very beginning, he talks about who is included in the covenant that he and the people have made with God. Another piece is that he talks about where are these teachings that he's brought to the people. Are they far away? Are they close? Where are they? And then the last thing he talks about is choices we have to make. So we're looking at who's included, where the teachings come from, or where they are, and what choices do we have to make based on being part of that community and having those teachings to call on. I'm going to read in Hebrew and I will translate as I go. Atem netzavim hayom kulchom lifnei Adonai Elohechem, rishechem, shivtechem, ziknechem, veshotrechem, kol ish Yisrael, tapchem nishechem vegercha, asher bekerev, Machanecha, 
מחוטב עד סכר עד שואב ממך. You stand here this day, all of you, before the eternal your God. The heads of your tribes, your officers, your elders, every person, children, wives, the stranger who is here with you, from the people who cut wood to the people who draw water. Lo'overcha bevrit Adonai Elohecha uva'alato, asher Adonai Elohecha koret imcha hayom. You're here to make this covenant with the eternal your God, which God makes with you today. Lo'ma'an hakim orcha hayom lo la'am, vehu yihye lecha l'elohim, so that you will be God's people, and the eternal will be your God. Ka'asher diber lach ve'cha'asher nishba l'avotecha l'avraham l'yitzchak u'liyakov. And this is as your God promised your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Ve'lo itchem levadchem anochi koret et habrit hazot ve'et ha'ola hazot. It's not only with you that God makes this covenant and this oath. Ki et asher yesh nopo imanu omed hayom lifnei Adonai Eloheinu, ve'et asher eneni po imanu hayom. It is with those of you who are here today, and also with those of you who are not, also with those who are not here today. And now I'm going to move to a spot a little later in the Torah to continue our special portion for Yom Kippur. We skip ahead a little bit. Ki ha-mitzvah hazot asher anochi mitzavcha hayom lo nifleithi mimcha velo rechoka hi lo vashamayim hi lemor mi ya'ale lanu hashamayma this mitzvah, this commandment that I give you this day, it's not too wondrous, it's not too strange for you. It is not far from you. It is not up in the sky that you have to say, who will go up to the sky and get it for us and bring it back so that we can do it? It is not over the seas that we would say, who will go over the seas for us and get this mitzvah for us, for us that they may bring it to us and we may do it. Ki karov elecha. No, the thing or the word is here, very close. It is in your mouth, it is in your heart, and you can do it. Natanti lifanecha hayom et hachayim ve'et hatov. I look, I put before you today. Life and good, ve'et ha'mavet ve'et ha'ra, death and evil. Asher anochi mitzavcha hayom la'ahava et anunai elohecha la'lechet bidrachav ve'lishmor mitzvotav ve'chukotav u'mishpatav. And I say to you this day to love the eternal your God and to walk in God's ways and to keep God's mitzvahs, mitzvot, laws, and commandments. Vechayita veravita uvrachecha adonai lohecha veeretz asher atava shamal arishta. And in this way, you will live, and you will increase, and you will be blessed by the eternal your God on the land that you are coming into as your inheritance. Ve'im yifne levavcha, velo tishma'ah, 
ונידחתה והשתחווית, לא, לא, סורי, לאלוהים אחרים ועבדתם. But if you turn away from Adonai, your God, and you bow down and worship other gods, and you turn your heart away from your God, Higaneti lachem hayom, ki avod tovedun, lo ta'arichun yamim al ha'adama asher ata over et ha'yardan yarden levo shamarishta. If you do those things, you will be destroyed. You will not live long in the land that you're crossing the Jordan to live in as your inheritance. Mm -hmm. I swear this today. Adoti vachem hayom et hashemayim ve'et ha'aretz. I swear this by the skies and by the land. Ha'chayim ve'hamavet natanti lifanecha ha'bracha ve'haklala. I put before you life and death, blessing and curse. Uvacharta v'chayim, choose life. Lema'an chayita ata v'zaracha la'ahava et Adonai Elohecha, that you may love the eternal your God, you and your children. Lishmoa v'kolo, to listen to God's voice. Uladav ka bo, and to be close to God. Kihu chayecha veorech yamecha, because God is your life and the length of your days. La shevet al haarma, asher nishba Adonai levatecha levarcham leitzchak uladav leYaakov latent lehem. And in this way, you will have life and length of days on the land that you are going into to settle, which God promised your ancestors to Isaac, to Jacob, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give to them. Now we're going to join together everyone who'd like to in our blessing for after the Torah reading. And I will roll it up before we bless. And all who want, let's join together. So I will go ahead and lead, and please join in if you would like to. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lanu torat emet, Bechaye olam nata betochenu, Baruch ata Adonai, noten ha Torah. Amen. And before this slide comes down, and tech folks, you can take it down in just a moment, I wanted to point out to everybody if you look at the graphic at the bottom, which is a picture um, of a few of the uh, I guess we wouldn't call them pages, uh, panels, I guess, from the scroll. Panels or, or columns, yeah. Yeah. If you look in the center, you'll see a big dark letter, and that is the last letter of the Shema. Uh, the Shema has a couple letters that are made extra large, and I, I thought it would be interesting to see that there in the Torah, since it's a prayer that we say together so regularly. If you're looking for it, it's right smack in the middle of the middle column right after the paragraph break. Yeah, thank you, Joel. So tech folks, you can go ahead and take down the slide here. And I want to invite people to participate in a discussion in which I wanna ask how this speaks to you, these teachings from the Torah at Yom Kippur. Um, it's chosen for Yom Kippur. And I mentioned that a few of the specifics I wanted to look at are who are these teachings for? Where are these teachings? And then 
we're told to choose life, which might be a bit strange. We don't necessarily think that we're going to not choose life. But what does that mean? Um, so where are the teachings for you that you want to follow? And where do you fit into the group of people these are offered to? And how do you want to choose life? Those are my questions for you. And I want to broaden the choose life in a way that specifically speaks to some issues that are especially on my mind now, and I'm sure on many of your minds. And that is the ways that we have been part of a culture, or are part of a culture that is not choosing life for many people. Um, and Joel mentioned some specifics before. We've seen the many ways that people who are marginalized financially or people of color are dying at much higher rates, getting sick at much higher rates. We see the police violence against people of color. I forget the exact statistic, but it is so high compared to whether police treat pe white people with violence. So those are some ways of choosing or not choosing life that are um, very clear in our society today. I don't mean it's necessarily always clear what to do about them, but I wanna bring those into the mix. So with that, I wanna open it up and just see how this speaks to anybody today. And also, if you have a question, you can feel free to ask. And you can either raise your hand by clicking um, where it says uh, participants. There is a little arrow next to it. And you can click and raise your hand. Or you can just wave your hand around. And we will do our best to get to you. And I will call on you so we don't all talk. We don't talk over one another. So I'd love to hear any questions or thoughts people have. And tech folks, if you see somebody, go ahead and call on them if I'm missing them. Joel is raising his hand. OK. Am I the only one? <laughs> well, I do um, want to And Linda Goodman. Great. OK. Linda, why don't you kick us off? Unless you want me yeah, to. Yeah, one thing I, I heard that was interesting was um, when God was talking about who was included and basically said everyone who's here. Um, and it sounded like there might be other people that perhaps didn't identify as Jews and everyone who wasn't here. So was he saying that everyone's chosen? <laughs> <laughs> who well, wants I think, to... go ahead, go ahead, Linda. I mean, I, I like in my partner is, is not Jewish, but does that mean that he's in the part of the room, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I just that was that was um, curious to me. Yeah. So, um, a couple answers. One is it said that the the stranger who is in our gates, mm -hmm. and that means a person who is not part of that people or that culture, but they are still invited into that covenant. So, um, you know, I don't know how your partner sees himself. But um, it means that the, the Jewish people's covenant is open to those who want to join those people. Um, the other question you had was about people who are not there, which is talking about the people of the future and maybe also the people of the past. So in other words, that was a description of who the covenant is directed towards. And so for example, you and I weren't there, but we still were there spiritually. We're still part of that group. Thank you. So I'm going to call on Gary now. Gary, just go ahead and unmute and share your thoughts. All right, there we go. 
there I go. So I was remembering, and I got up and go and went and get it. There's a the probably one of the earliest Kabbalah for dummies books was written by Moses Cordovero <laughs> um, in the 12th century, there about 13th century, and he had this teaching about our portion in Torah, um, and it said. God will make you aware of this aspect of the divine Torah that no one else has yet attained. For each soul has a unique portion in Torah. Um, and Cordovero is very much a teacher. So he's someplace else. He says, it's important for you, therefore, to share it. Because if you do not share it, no one will learn it. <laughs> and so you're obligated to speak, even when you don't want to, when you're shy and quiet. Your portion is important that all should hear what you have been given. Thank you. Yeah. I think one of the ideas um, about Torah is that we learn partly in order to teach, to share our understanding with others. Thank you. Lindsay? Yeah, I'm just marveling at sort of the idea of choosing life and how strongly that relates to our choices around how we respond to COVID-19 and what precautions we decide to take or not take. And I know that um, in many families, there's differing views on what safety looks like. And that's, you know, the source of some conflict and tension for some people. And it just really kind of hit home. But that's, I think, where that is at the heart of for the people who might be um, more conservative in their choices, feeling like the people who are maybe doing more actions that they feel unsafe, they're not choosing life um, or, or risking not choosing life. Um, and that really just felt like a parallel for me today. Yeah, thank you, Lindsay. Joel, I'm just not calling on you because I want to give other folks a chance, but I have not forgotten. Understood. Um, and I especially want to invite those of you who were with us for uh, class we had about this tour portion, uh, I guess several days ago now, the days run together as I'm sure you all understand. But anybody who was in that class, there were a lot of really interesting comments. And if any of you feel like uh, sharing your thoughts or asking a question, please Did go ahead. Did I see ahead. Adrian's hand? Great, Adrian, Did go I? right ahead. You unmute yourself. You're, Adrian, you're muted, you need to unmute yourself. There you go. There you are. I just wanted to follow up on Lindsay's analogy with the COVID responses to our responses to Black Lives Matter. I mean, the therefore choose life um, is not only choose life for ourselves, but choose life for others. And since we are all um, remembering that we are all one today uh, and that God is one and that we're all part of the same human family, it seems incumbent upon us to um, recognize that our lives matter and black lives matter and we should be working toward that, particularly as Yom Kippur is instructing us <laughs> to make a difference in our choices for the next year. Thank you. Who else? Claire has their hand up. Right. Yeah, I just wanted to add to that. Totally agree. And I think there's also a parallel that can be made to the choices that we make that impact um, not just other people, but the planet and how so many of our choices impact the animals and plants around us. And we hold that responsibility in all of our choices. And so when we choose life, we can also be choosing life for our planet and for the generations to come. Amen. Thank you. Just those two words, choose life. They're so meaningful, so brief, but inspire so much thought. Sarah Sunstein and then Paul Hoffman. Go ahead, Sarah. Hi. Um, yes, definitely agreement with, with all, all the things people have said, but the whole service today has struck me in a totally different way, of course, and all of my doubting of God as an entity 
is right there. And um, just things I've been going through in the last however many months. Um, thinking that choose life and some of the other things said today that I've written down, but I don't know where they are, but it's, can I be, can I live my life from being self oriented instead of being oriented towards others? And it's like, I don't want God forgiving me. I need to forgive me. Mm -hmm. um, and the action of choose life means, do I really value my own life? and act in accordance with that hmm. um, as opposed to any other thing you know group think or just being lazy or you know the other gods to me were like addictions of whatever sort mm -hmm. and so it's in choosing life it's yes act out of integrity which also means yes supporting black lives matter and speaking truth when people are abusive or whatever situation. Anyway, that's, it's, it's been powerful for me today. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. And I'm glad you brought up God. I often say this at the beginning of services, but I didn't today. Um, and that is that I know for some people, the word God can really be a barrier, which is totally understandable because there's so many very stereotyped or um, uh, static or unbelievable concepts about God. So I encourage people to see how that word can be an opening for you and maybe use a different word if that works better for you. Source of life, truth, whatever it is that to you uh, is, a, is a meaningful way to speak about how we are all connected and what our deepest values are. Paul, Paul Hoffman. Gotta unmute yourself, Paul. There you go. Thank you. Well, I uh, resonate with the other members of the congregation who've spoken to this issue. And I'm always reminded on this day uh, about the Torah portion because that was the Torah portion that I read during my bar mitzvah. Uh, so it is an annual reminder of how fortunate I was to uh, be bar mitzvahed by uh, Sidney Axelrod at Temple Bethel in Berkeley who was a, a major influence on my life. Uh, but speaking more specifically to the issue of, of choosing life, I'm always reminded of Takuna Lum to repair the world. And it seems to me as others have spoken, uh, that means that we need to fight against intolerance and not to be passive, to be active in whatever way is productive and constructive. And if we do that increasingly in large numbers, hopefully the level of, intol of intolerance will diminish, but it is a day-to-day -day process without, um, without being um, neglecting or neglectful of that role and responsibility that we, has, that we have as, as members of the congregation. Thank you, Paul. I saw a chat message that Nicole Kiner had raised her hand. Great, Nicole, go right ahead. I did. I I just I wanted to say um, that I'm very exhausted, and um, as we all are, but I wanted to tell you how much it means to have people say that Black Lives Matter. Um, it's been a really rough go for a long time, and I think a lot of things have been pushed under the rug. And this, uh, the services always bring everything to the fore for everybody and whatever it is. And so I wanted to really thank you, and especially Lindsay, I want to say thank you and to everyone for your open-mindedness, et cetera. And because it took me so long to raise my hand, I've sort of forgotten exactly what the point was relative to the Torah, but it had to do with the land um, that 
like, I will let you know, God essentially saying, I will let you know, and I will tell you through the land. And it seems to me that the land is, you know, I mean, I'm watching ash falling on my roof right now. And, you know, we've all experienced the air and the, the um, skies. Um, it, it really does seem like um, choose life is also part of wake up <laughs> or stay awake. It's so easy to drift into comfort and familiarity and ignorance. And um, I just wanted to send my gratitude to everyone for their wakefulness and their caring. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you. you and I see Molly Sandal calling in just a moment, Molly. And I, I'm not surprised you're exhausted. You know, there's, I think many of us are exhausted and uh, I hope we can derive some sense of support from one another and uh, not only today, but in other ways throughout the year to, to help us go on and make those choices and stand up and also once in a while take a break as well. Molly? I was just going to say that what so many of you have mentioned reminds me of John Lewis um, asking memory. us to make good trouble. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's another way to choose life. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. Anybody else? And tech folks, if I'm missing somebody, you know, go ahead and let us know. Should I speak up or should I hold? Yeah, go right ahead, Joel. So where is the law? Moses says, uh, basha he. it's not in the heavens. What he's probably saying, I think, in, in, in the context is to... Um, not let people give themselves an out, not wiggle out of it by saying, ah, it's too big, too powerful, too far away, <clears throat> not for little old me. But it's always interesting, I think, to see what the rabbis do with these, um, with these quotes. And there's a rather cute and famous story, which I'm sure, Bridget, you know well, and maybe others do too. It's called the Oven of Achnai story. And, it's, you know, there, are, there were so many disputes among the ancient rabbis on various points of law, we sometimes may get this false impression that the law is settled, and over time it got kind of codified and settled in many ways, but there were lots and lots of disputes. Um, and in this particular story, the rabbis are arguing over one of their favorite topics, which is whether something is kosher or not, specifically whether a particular new style of oven uh, is kosher or not, or would be subject subject to ritual impurity, which they were also very concerned about. And again, you know, this may or may not be a topic that um, many of us feel relevant to our lives. Uh, it was very relevant to their lives, and they argued over it incessantly. And in this case, we have one particular rabbi, whose name is Rabbi Eliezer ben Hirkanus, who is the only one who is arguing that the oven is ritually pure. There's others, including the, the head of the Sanhedrin, Rabbi Gamliel, who says, no, 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 it's tame, it's impure. And Rabbi Eliezer tries to convince his colleagues. They're not convinced and finally starts to call on miracles. He says, if the halakha is in accordance with my opinion, this carob tree will prove it. And sure enough, the carob tree uproots itself and flies, you know, 500 meters down the road and reroots itself there. And he says, ha. And the rabbis say, you don't, you know, a carob tree isn't a witness in a debate about law. And Rabbi Eliezer says, fine. If the halakha is in accordance with my opinion, the stream will prove it, and the stream starts to float backwards, and the rabbis say, that's no good, too. And Rabbi Eliezer says, well, in that case, the walls of the study hall will prove it, and the walls start to go in. And then Rabbi, which rabbi is it? Rabbi Joshua scolds the walls and says, like, how dare you interfere in a dispute? And so the walls, to this day, it is said, remain um, at an angle, out of respect for both rabbis, not fully upright and not fully down. Um, and then finally, um, Rabbi Eliezer calls down a voice from heaven and says, let the voice from heaven prove my argument. And the voice from heaven, sure enough, says, why are you differing with Rabbi Eliezer as the halakha is in accordance with his opinion in every place that he expresses an opinions? And Rabbi Joshua says, lo bashamayim he. It is not in the heavens. And God is reported in this story to have laughed 
and to have said, my children have defeated me, my children have defeated me. Now again, in context, this is the rabbinic way of asserting authority to make law. Uh, anybody who is, have, has any lawyer background, you, you could think about judges. The authority to make law even when it differs with the written Torah, and they do that quite a bit. But again, I think in our time, how do we look at this? One, I think we, of course, continue as we are the tradition of the rabbis, but we realize it's not a new thing to change things up. It's not a new thing to adapt the law to our present circumstances and our present needs. Um, it goes all the way back uh, to you know the folks of 2,000 years ago who are wrestling with a text that works sometimes and doesn't work other times, and that was 2,000 years ago. And um, we continue to do the same thing here, and we can say it's not in the heavens. It's close to us. Thank you. Marcy, you had your hand up, or you do have your hand up. Go right ahead. Hi, everyone. Um, so the, the piece that I'm working on personally around choosing life is, um, you know, really looking at the, the character challenges that I have, that I bring to the plate where I may be um, fearful or, and, um, and it comes out in weird ways. Um, just a new one just brought, you know, where I can use the um, just subtle, but probably not by the other person it the you know aggressive ways of responding to something and that's not how i want to be and so i'm just in an awareness place right now because what i ultimately want is to be kind and be generous to myself to others to know that i'm held by god and um but man there's a lot of lifelong strategies in place um to um and so to choose differently we'll see <laughs> i guess that's where prayer also comes in where i can ask for assistance yeah and we all i mean we all need help however it is that we get it however it is that we um realize that we need it it's it's important to ask for it because all of these this is all really hard as we're all acknowledging and gets really wearing yeah, and I think it, it is easy to still, you know, point at, point our fingers at others that they're not doing right. You know, like my my call is to stop using single use plastic. You know, and someone else's call to, to is something else, and it's easy. I know for me, I fall prey of being intolerant that they're not agreeing with my my thing that is important to me, and. And um, yeah, so humility, I guess, is and tolerance is is a way that I know that I can begin to choose life more. Thank you. So we're going to move on, and I want to mention right now that um, our next activity is going to be after the service is over. It's going to be a discussion on um, becoming the people we mean to be which is a chance for a few people who are part of our Musar, our Jewish ethics group to speak about their experiences and um, answer questions and we'll have an open discussion. So if you're thinking about how to be a better person, there's one place to, to bring those thoughts and um, see what we can learn. So I am going to move us on and I'm telling our uh, tech people here so that we, because we're gonna jump ahead a little bit. We are going to move on to the Alenu reading and that is on sl slide 30. And Sherry and Miguel are going to introduce it and lead us and we will read together in English in just a moment and then we are going to sing together in the Hebrew. So Sherry and Miguel take it away.
unwrap of our Torah. Whoops, we're going to skip the Torah piece. <laughs> yep, there we go. We're going to skip The Torah this. did get wrapped up, don't worry. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. We're, running, we're running a little late, so I'm skipping on to Elenu. And there we go. Yes, and our Torah is safely wrapped up. We don't need to watch, but it's safe. Sherry, Miguel, go right ahead. Okay, thank you. I, I'm going to give a few thoughts, and Miguel is going to read the Elenu. That's how we're dividing it. Right. Um, and it, it comes, the Elenu seems to come at the exact right time in this service. I feel like it speaks to so much of what we've spoken about um, this morning and the comments that I actually thought about last night and wrote have really been echoed by so many of you today. So um, uh, um, bear with me. But I do think this prayer is, is really about the awesome responsibility that we have that we have to engage in the world. But in order to, act, to actualize that responsibility, um, we really have to believe in the oneness and the fact that we are connected um, to one on this planet. And so that understanding that in order for us to survive and to thrive, um, we all share the water, the land, the air, the resources, we, we have to be able to do that. Um, and that, you know, if we harm one, we harm all. And I think that the world outcry from the murder of George Floyd was a reminder that our commitment must be steady. We, we can't waver. And for me, this prayer reminds us to continue to use our agency, and our, not just my agency, it's our agency, um, to fulfill our destiny, making the world just and whole. Did you read it? Yeah. Yeah, go right ahead, Miguel, and let's join right. Miguel. And thank you, Sherry. It is up to us to hollow creation, to respond to life with the fullness of our lives. It is up to us to meet the world, to embrace the whole, even as we wrestle with its parts. It is up to us to repair the world and to bind our lives to truth. Therefore, we bend the knee and shake off the stiffness that keeps us from the subtle graces of life and the supple gestures of love. With reverence and thanksgiving, we accept our destiny and set ourselves the task of redemption. And as we transition to the next slide, you know, the, the, the English has said we bend the knee. The Hebrew says, um, Again, we say this um, customarily standing and also bowing. So we can rise and bow in body or spirit. And I don't remember where I said this. It was on some Zoom, and it could have been with Jewish Gateways. Um, again, in the spirit of, of Black Lives Matter, I am reinterpreting this for this time to being in the posture of taking a knee um, in the tradition of Colin Kaepernick and of the many people, especially the people now uh, you know, joined by many white players uh, in taking knees at the beginning of a game, it's really a very respectful posture, contrary to the way it has been deliberately, in my opinion, misinterpreted. Uh, it's a position of respect, but it is one that's also saying we are not standing tall yet. Things are still broken. So in body or spirit, we rise. In body or spirit, we bow. In body or spirit, we take a knee. Vanachnu korim umishtachavim umodim lifne melech malche hamelachim hakadosh paruchu kakatu betoratecha Adonai imloch leolam vaed vene emar vehaya Adonai lemelech al kol haaretz ayom haru. Vayom hahu, yihye Adonai echad. Ushmo, ushmo, ushmo echad. And now Sandy Warren is going to make some comments and announcements. 
Then we're going to join together in the Kaddish as we come to the close of our service. So I want to invite Sandy to uh, unmute if you haven't already. Hi, Sandy. Hi. My name is Sandy Warren, and I, I'm just here to talk a little bit about the journey my wife and I have made getting to Jewish gateways. We were looking for a Jewish community that we felt at home with and comfortable with for many years. And we tried a variety of different synagogues. And for whatever the reason, it, it just wasn't for us. And we had almost given up hope of finding one because we had tried for so long and hadn't gotten there. And then one day my wife was talking to a friend and a woman came up and tried to get this friend to join Musar. And while the friend didn't want to join Musar, my wife said, this is a great idea and I would like to do it. So serendipitously, she got more involved with Jewish gateways as she began the Musar course. And pretty soon in the days before coronavirus, we could have Shabbat dinners where people would get together at someone's house and have a chance to talk and, and share. And I found that at each of these Shabbat dinners, I was getting to know more people and liking more people and feeling more at home with them. And we even got to the stage where there's something that's called Shabbat in the Park for kids. And my wife and I volunteered to work there, which is a great experience if anybody hasn't done it after the coronavirus. But it was just wonderful to see the children and see how they were doing. And at each stage, I felt more comfortable. And I think it was at High Holy Day services that we began to realize this really was our community. And I have to say, if I ever had any doubts about that, just listening to how we discussed the Torah portion this morning, with all that was brought in, with all the different perspectives, with the values, it truly is, is an inspirational thing of who makes up our community and how intelligent they are. And one of the things that the coronavirus has taught me is you can't assume that institutions will continue in, in your community. When things hit, it, life can get very difficult. And one of the things that's critical in our community in order to do all the things we do is we need an infrastructure to design programs, to think about what we're gonna to do, to have people register, all of those nuts and bolts things that are critical. And what's important is we have to support that infrastructure. And that means we have to make a donation. So if you can, if you have a chance, I who have now found a Jewish community really care that other people can try and we, we make sure that this community continues. So I just wanted to say thank you to everyone and particularly to Rabbi Bridget and Joel and the 80 plus volunteers who've helped us and the tech people who made sure I didn't screw this up. I just want to say thank you and Shana Tova. Well, thank you from me, Joel, especially to those 80 volunteers, uh, as well as to Bridget. Um, probably the volunteers have been as privy as I have to just how hard she has been working uh, for many, 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 many weeks on this sweating, all sorts of details. I'll give the Hebrew word for donation as well, because I think it's relevant. The Hebrew word for donation is teruma. And what that means, literally it comes from the Hebrew root, to lift or raise something up. To lift or raise something up. Um, I trust the meaning is, is clear without further unpacking. I think it is. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Joel. We come now to our Kaddish. And what we have been doing while we are on Zoom is offering people a chance, which I will do in just a moment, to say the names of anyone for whom you are saying Kaddish today. And I invite you to unmute and do that. And after that, we will recite the Kaddish. So please go ahead and share names of anyone you're remembering at this time. Lady Fine. Hi, fine. Steve, fine. Hi. Richard. 
Ruth Bader Ginsburg. <laughs> Ruth Bader Ginsburg. The housewife. Anna Leitacher. Rebecca Golinski. Gary Alper. Bernie and Ruth Golinski. Penelope Flum. Simon Goodman. Annette Zaritsky, Rhoda Ray, David Zaritsky, Rebecca Lear, James Spahn, Jerry Himmelfarb, Mary Jane Block, Frank Danita Cohen, Eva Cohen, Albert Cohen, Art Burke, Amen. Jonathan Lovell. Mo Jerry. Mo is it? Hilda. Hilda. Aaron who was shot and killed yesterday. Join together now. Let's join together now in the cottage. I'll ask our tech folks to put that up. The parts in bold are parts for those who are not saying Kaddish for someone they're remembering at this time. For, uh, for those folks to join in in support of those who are saying Kaddish. So even if you are not saying Kaddish, you have a role to let others feel supported. Yit Gadal, Yit Kaddash, Shemei Rabbah. Amen. Ba'alma divra chirute, v'yamlich malchute, v'chayachon uv'yomechon, v'chaye dochol beit Yisrael, v'agala uv'yizman kariv, v'yimru, amen. Amen, yehe, shemeh rabba merorach, le'alam olam 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 Yitbarach, v'yishtabach, v'yitpa'ar, yitromam, yitnas, whoops, excuse me, Yit Barak, Vyish Tabak, Vyit Paar, Vyit Romam, Vyit Nase, Vyit Tadar, Vyitale, Vyitalal, Shme du Kurisha, Brihu. La Ela, La Ela, Mikol Birchata, Vishirata, Tush Bechata, Venechemata, Da Amiran, Vilma, Vimru, Amen. Amen. Yehe Shlama Raba Min Shamaya, V'chayim alenu v'al kol Yisrael v'imru, amen. Amen. O se shalom b'imromav, hu ya'ase shalom, alenu v'al kol Yisrael v'al kol yoshvei tevel v'imru, amen. Amen. We are going to close our service now. Folks, uh, tech folks, you can take that down. And let us see one another. And um, we are scheduled to have our discussion about Musar, uh, the Jewish ethics practice at one o'clock, which is in six minutes. <laughs> we ran a little late, didn't we? <laughs> yes, we did. So um, what I would like to do is to let people know we are going to change the time there. We're going to start at 1.30 and I will make sure to um, get on and let anyone else know who is joining us for that discussion at 1. I want to give people a chance to get a break. So our discussion will begin at 1.30. And what I want to invite you to do now is if you would like to, to go into one of our breakout groups, we have facilitated facilitators who are going to be in them. If you want to stick around to do that, you may and you'll be sent into a group. And if not, if you just want to get off and take some time for yourself, that is fine. And at 1.30, we'll have our Musar discussion. And then at 5.30, we're going to gather for a healing service. Um, nope, sorry, six, six o'clock, we're going to always get this mixed up. Six o'clock, we're going to gather for a healing service, 630, a Yiskor memorial service, 
and seven o'clock our Naila and closing service followed by Havdalah, the ceremony for separating between the sacred time and ordinary time. And I wish everybody a meaningful rest of this Yom Kippur day, in time for reflection, connection, whatever it is that you need. And um, uh, I Rabbi Bridget, before we go into breakout rooms, I just wanted to read out if for folks who are not looking at the chat. Yeah. Cheryl had something really, really sweet uh, that she put in. It helps reframe the Zoom experience for me, something I had not thought of. I'll just read what she wrote. May I add how grateful I am for this Yom Kippur to be looking at everyone's faces as we pray, sing, and contemplate these issues rather than the backs of heads. Your beautiful diversity, attentive eyes, we are turning towards each other. I think that's lovely and more than just symbolic. Oh, thank you so much. Beautiful words, Cheryl. And, you know, I still love the tent and I still want to be in the tent. Maybe we can even figure out a way to configure the tent so that we're <laughs> able to see our faces more. But it's such yeah. a lovely thought. Thank you. And yeah. it's, it is one of, with every, you know, no change is all good and no change is all bad. So this is where we are this year. So I will see some of you at 1.30. I will see some of you at 6. And I wish you best for the rest of this Yom Kippur day. If you would like to be in a facilitated breakout group, just hang around and you will be sent there. And before that, I invite everybody to unmute and we can just all greet one another and say, Shana Tava. And thank you. Hurry up. Anatta Ba. 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 Anatta Ba.